Bad guy got the bow? They never did on Hercules for six seasons on the television, so oh. they only interfered after everything was lost. So, I know. It's just I always like, kind of wondered that part. Like, if you know the future, can't you change the future? Well, I would think you could. Mm. But, but here's the trick is, if you interfere, is your interference what caused it to happen to begin with? So do you not interfere or interfere? So it basically makes you impotent as far as being a god is concerned. Ah, uh, so anyway, what does happen, as you can guess, is after he has the bow, he, well, let's, let's just say he makes his impression, and he unleashes the power of the sleeping titans, of Ooh. which the immortals do have to come to the rescue. And as Zeus okay. said, this is not your battle, this is ours. Because they imprisoned the titans. Of whom once was one was Poseidon. Oh, really? Poseidon was one of the guys. He was, you know, he he was a he was a titan. Oh. So I remember he lives in the ocean and only would come out upon the bidding of Zeus. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. So the, this this ti this Poseidon walks around on the ground like everybody else. That thing. Which one? This Poseidon walks no, around. No, he doesn't. He's up with the mortals. No, but that's what I mean. He, he basically, Poseidon is the god of the ocean. He basically tends to pull around there all the time. Well, we are out in the ocean today. That's why we're doing this, in honor of Poseidon and the immortals. <laughs> and we're showing you airplanes coming in over our heads. The, the movie is predictable? Well, well it's, 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 Greek it's, it's a Greek mythology. It's a Greek mythology. Okay, um, we'll put it this way. In the ninth, late 50s and 60s, I used to work on the signs of Hercules things. Yeah. And basically, if you worked on one, you worked on every single one of them. Well, they all had the same structure, so. Well, it is predictable. But you know what? It is, I mean, this is a movie to see in 3D. Yeah. I, I did not, think, first of all, I'm not really one for blood and guts, and I thought I would really not like it at all. Yeah. Uh, but I actually did really like the effects on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, uh, like I said, the, the reviews are, that people, it basically got rotten reviews. I mean, it's 40% uh, rotten reviews. But the people, that they said that if you get in the theater, it's more than what you thought it was going to be because the reviewers are basically, uh, you either have, you, you got a lot of reviewers that don't like, here's the problem is, a lot of them do not like 3D. They'll give you, well, it would have been better if it had been done in 2D. Well, they can go watch the 2D version. Yeah. <laughs> well, but they go to the 3D version because that's what the um, the producers want you to see. They get they send you into the 3D version. Isn't that a riptide right there? Look at it out there. But I, I will tell you that it's, it's cool to see it in 3D. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate. I brought my own um, 3D you're, glasses with me. You're, which set? Gunners or the Edders? Oh, uh, I actually brought Calvin Klein's Marsh on the Gunners. Oh, okay. So you had similar to look neat. You had all of these in it. So. Yeah. But it was, so, it, you know, it's just one of those movies that yeah. you can truly appreciate it on the big screen. Yeah, well, no. Uh, and in 3D. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the difference, too, is, um, okay, there is, all movie screens are not made the same because the other night we were watching, actually a couple of days ago, we watched the, uh, the Warriors on a really big screen. Yeah. But we've been watching movies on screens that are about half that size. And the bigger the screen, and like uh, we've also seen the movies, uh, IMAX versions of some of these things, and IMAX so dwarfs everything else that it's unreal. Yeah. So, but, you know, is it something you, you would pay money to go see if you were paying money? If I had the extra money, yes. Well, yeah, because we actually, it, 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 okay, where would we be right now if we weren't here? Where would we be? We'd have been over at the opening performance of Immortals this morning. Oh, oh, that's true. Yeah, if we weren't doing the review right now, we would have been over there. That's right, so. Because it is. It's, let's see it. It's cool on yeah. the big screen. Yeah, probably, uh, if you do, you see it in 3D, it'd probably go IMAX if they IMAX, it makes a difference. Yeah, I don't remember if they're doing an IMAX version. But they I'm almost sure. do an IMAX of every single 3D out there because it's just an optical change. Yeah, meanwhile, Kellen Lutz, I mean, this is a big week or two weeks for him because Immortals is one week and then Twilight comes out or Breaking Dawn. Yeah. Um, the next, 
movie in the series comes out this next week, so it's yeah. two two weeks in a row. I know. So you know, so he's an up and coming young actor, but um, you know, it's just because I all I, I didn't get to see this one, so I can't make a whole lot of comments on it. All I can do is I, I read I read the early reviews, which are from just a couple of days ago, and I've got this I've got the production notes, and you know, it's uh, all I know is that uh, you know the director loves special effects. He's known for special effects. Well, and it's a special effect laden movie. Yeah. And it's cool. I yeah. loved it. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, you can tell it wasn't done in 3D um, yeah. because of, well, some of the push pounds and the focus. Yeah, and, okay. Um, the different things. There's lots of blue screening. Um, but it's an epic, it's sci fi, and you would expect that. Yeah. Especially from a director that loves special effects. Yeah. So you'll have a lot of it, but like I said, so, sometimes we see movies in 2D and 3D, but I, we can tell though when you see the 3D how it's going to look in 2D, so mm -hmm. I'm guessing like it just simply is not going to be, a, I mean, the, the problem comes is that they're no longer making movies for the American market. This movie is probably made for the market that's going to bring us money in. Yeah, didn't 300 make most of its money in um, international sales? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just not the type of film that Americans really like a lot, which is, I mean, okay, they like horror films with lots of blood, and they don't go to 3D horror films with lots of blood. Every one of them but Piranha has been a failure. Oh, really? And, uh, but this isn't a horror film. This is horror. No, but you're still throwing lots of blood. And yeah. uh, that was, they said, the, okay, two of the complaints was, for Christ's sake, can't you find American actors to work in movies anymore that no, we know? Keep, we keep hearing that. <laughs> and it's got, there's a reason why, because almost all of the athletic actors are European. They're no longer American. Try finding an American actor that is fit enough uh, to do an action movie like that anymore. Sylvester Stallone's in his 60s. Uh, Schwarzenegger's in his 60s. You, uh, so you don't have young American actors to do action so they go to Europe, uh, Australia, to pick up actors that can basically look the parts of a uh, superhero. I mean, look at um, uh, of, of all the actors doing the um, the superhero stuff on the movies right now, only have Chris Evans, and Chris Evans basically doesn't like the muscle he has to put on. Yeah, and he only put it on for the movie. That's right. He's not comfortable with it. Where the European actors are known for their muscle stuff. So, uh, there and, are a lot of nice apps, I will admit. Yeah, they get what it, you have to do it. And it possibly, I would assume they've got everybody lined up for a sequel on it. But um, then the second one, too, is that the uh, second complaint they have is 3D. The, okay, what it is is you have a minority of people in this nation that like 3D. The majority of them say, why do you do it in 3D when 2D is where... I mean, these are the same people that would have said, why shoot in color when you have black and white? Why shoot in stereophonic sound, which is high fidelity, which not a spring chicken didn't actually know was, just in another generation. Why do high fidelity stereo when mono works? Why do 35 millimeter when 16 works? Why do 70 millimeter when 35 works? Why do IMAX when you've already got 70 millimeter? Why do 3D when 2D is perfectly acceptable? Because th these are the people that would, uh, you, you would be, basically, as my father said, you would be uh, sitting there hand cranking a generator to put lights in your home and to power your crystal radio Aww. if they had their way. And I would say, why not fill the seats in the theater, give the people something to look at. I mean, isn't this entertainment? It is entertainment. They said a, a, a good 3D movie is just as good as a good 2D movie. It's just, um, you can, okay, here's the thing is, there are no 3D movies shot in 3D. All of them, oh. every 3D oh, they did movie. say Three Musketeers was. No. I don't know. It's back a ended. couple of the people in the audience said that. It's, it's, in, it's all 3D movies are back in it. You can have two cameras out, you can have two lenses, two cameras, the, everything is back ended because the 3D, to, all the processing has to be done in the, in the back end, so therefore, but the, they, they'll take the problems of the 3D out, fix it in the lab, and then make it 3D again. Mm -hmm. So the 3D, but at the time, what you see on the camera and what you see on the screen are not the same thing. You want a true 3D thing, 
we would go to our uh, other other camera and shoot and basically process it as it comes out of the camera. Then you have a true 3D movie. You know what? I think the whole thing is, is they're used to working in with the standard yeah. the 2D. It makes it easier to work with, and then you just give it to somebody else and convert it. That's right. I think that's much easier. But it's all conversion, no matter what they'll say. Yeah. And they'll show you a camera that I know is nothing more than a shell over two bolted lenses. I mean. But, um, but we're, we're and we've seen that from the manufacturers. Yeah, but then we're going to give you your... This is how we always end everything. I mean, um, you, you know, okay, if you hadn't have seen it for free last night, would you have went this morning and paid to see it? Yes. See, so then, you know, then it's worth, uh, it's worth the, 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 the $15 that it will cost you to go in and see it. Then. Because we were planning to go see it in the theaters. That's right. That was our plan. So it's... She managed to get a pass to go see it last night. So, uh, okay, the trick is, if, you know, we can go see it. For instance, what, if it was IMAX, would you go pay to see it in IMAX now? You bet. See, so, and it's, uh, that there's your answer. I mean, if she's a very, you know, critical type person on where she puts her money, so. <laughs> yeah, let's go get some more equipment. <laughs> yeah, we need to get some more equipment, which is we're gonna do this afternoon anyway. But yeah, we gotta get more equipment this afternoon. So, but uh, no, but it, it's got it's it's got our thumbs up. It's it it is what you pay for. That is exactly what it is. It's uh, it's just like like I said when I was doing uh, the sword and sand things, which are different than surf and sand. They were exactly what people were paying to see. Mm -hmm. You know, people wanted to see muscular guys fighting it out with one another. That with scripts that basically nobody would have ever been proud to put their names on. Oh. <laughs> and acting that was really. You know, you you know, the, but put it this way: very few Shakespearean actors ever do sword and sand pictures. They have. I mean, you've seen uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier do. Um, uh, I think Jason and the Argonauts, the original version with Harry Halliday. So they will do it, but they don't do the sir, sand. They do the uh, the high lofty stuff that goes with the movie. So. Which I guess until our next review, which is coming up tomorrow, this is old Kim. And this is not a screen check. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montybubbles.net on the net. And wherever you're watching, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again. Now, actually, we've got new figures for this because we just discovered we now have over 250 million links to MBN and News Video Web for this content. I know. Isn't that amazing? You know, somebody's actually paying attention to what we're doing. <laughs> so.